It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So how would you receive it in a higher level? What do you do? Well, you can see the problems when, uh, when he said uh, that, that persecution came for the word's sake. So you can mm -hmm. see you got to make sure because the Satan comes immediately to steal that word. Immediately would mean <laughs> right in the middle of sometimes while you're hearing the word right. or before you ever leave uh, the place where you're meditating on the word or ever you leave church. I mean, Satan comes immediately to steal that word. Sometimes you start arguing in your mind, oh, that's, that's not working for me. Yeah. Well, work today. yeah, and uh, in Romans 4, when it says, Abraham, uh, being not weak in faith, considered not his own body, now dead, neither yet the dead in Sarah's womb, but it says he became strong in faith. And so it says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Where is that found? In, in Romans 4, 20. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Romans 4, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21. So it says he staggered not at the promise of God. So a lot of times you can give people the word, give them a promise, or God can speak that word to you. And some people just stagger at how could that be mm -hmm. true? Mm -hmm. And how could that ever happen you to feel me? Like you have to and make how it could that ever happen in my life? Right. So they staggered not because of the problem, they staggered at the promise. Yeah. So that he staggered not. So Lillian B. Yeomans is the one that I heard say this. I mean, yeah. maybe other people, I'm sure. But Lillian B. Yeomans said, we need more stagger knots. <laughs> Not astronauts, stagger knots. I'm a stagger knot. <laughs> Church has a few astronauts. <laughs> but anyway, we, we need more stagger knots mm -hmm. that people will receive the word and not stagger like, well, the situation I'm in or, you know, or the doctor's report said, or you don't understand my circumstances. Abraham did none of that. He did not stagger at the promise mm -hmm. of God. It said he became strong in strong faith. Strong in faith. So you can actually either be being not weak in faith. Mm -hmm. He became strong in faith. So you can have faith, but some people are weak in faith. And it, you know, your faith leads you, you know, God leads us with his word by his spirit. And he leads us like a shepherd to feed. You know, Psalm 23, he makes me lie down. He leads me in green pastures. He wants us to feed, like we talked about yesterday, on his faithfulness, to feed on his word. I remember when my daddy back in Italy was in the hospital and really struggling to live. Patsy and I, we were with Patsy and Tony, and Patsy and I took a walk one day. And as we walked, you know, if you just begin to meditate on the Word, the Holy Spirit joins you. It's like Jesus joins up with you. And we begin to discuss different words that He was speaking to our hearts. And it was encouraging. And it was like, okay, that word you had for yesterday was for yesterday. Hold fast to that. But I am leading you on, and there's another word I'm going to feed your faith with. And you can get a hold of it. You can grasp it. You can believe and take another step of faith. Mm -hmm. So you're making progress yeah. and coming out of where you were into where you want to be. Praise the Lord. With the Word, step by step. Yeah, that, that's an act of faith. An act of faith. And so further light, further revelation. So and how we you saw Dad respond each. It's like a battle plan for each step of the way. Yes. And, and the same with your... Sister, or, but Dad Hagen said something, you know, uh, that the moment you act on the Word or the moment you open the Word or the moment you confess, declare your agreement with the Word of God, that Satan comes immediately. Simply meaning there is no such thing as unchallenged faith. Right. So a lot of times people are surprised at the challenges 
But, you know, people say, well, if I thought if I had faith, I wouldn't have any problems. No, <laughs> no, the Apostle Paul apparently had so many problems on every side. And yet he said, I have the same spirit of faith. Mm -hmm. I believe and I speak. So just because you have faith doesn't mean that you're not going to have any problems. Right. Or just because you have faith doesn't mean you won't have any mountains. <laughs> Actually, Jesus said, have faith in God and say to the mountain. In other words, um, uh, the, your faith does not necessarily prevent mountains or doesn't necessarily prevent problems or your faith won't prevent all mountains, but it will move all mountains. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy comes immediately, starts throwing mountains and possibilities and challenges in front of you. And uh, he can throw everything but the kitchen sink at you. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, they might be physical, might be financial, <laughs> it could be mental, it could be emotional, yep. it could be family, it could be marriage, all kinds of mountains. But there's really one kind of faith that will move all kinds of mountains. What is that? That's the God, God kind, kind of faith. Of faith. <laughs> so when you have faith in God, <laughs> the God kind of faith, you only need one kind of faith. And you got it. And it'll move all kinds of mountains. Amen. Right? And so you have the God kind of faith. Mm -hmm. Paul said, we have the same measure of faith. And so 1 John 5, 4 says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So your faith has the ingredients in it designed to overcome the world. So feed your faith and then release or activate your faith with your words and with your praise and with acting on the word of God. And, and uh, God's given us also different kinds of prayer to pray for yeah. even different kinds of situations. But you can see that how you and I receive the word will determine how we receive from God. That's so true. And you know, God, he, he doesn't just leave you in the middle of the battle, he is with you. He won't leave you or yeah. forsake you. And I remember, you know, just thinking about all these things we're talking about. It reminded me of a uh, particular day in the hospital with Dylan. And, you know, things, they, they were pretty, pretty tough. difficult. And there were many different battles here. There are different uh, organs, different situations, yeah. you know, in his body. And uh, it was just touch and go, you know. So I had to get away from that. I was looking at this little child with all kinds of tubes and everything, and, and you know, they were saying this and that. So I went to the chapel, <coughs> which I did several times. <coughs> they had a little chapel in there, and um, they had a big Bible, one of those big, big Bibles. Big Bible. Damn big Bible. Bigger the Bible. <laughs> the better, better you can the hit result. the devil with it. <laughs> but anyway, I opened that up, and God just, he sends his word. But I remember First Peter 5, you know, says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And so as I read that, I would just feel like, okay, I'm getting down under the hand of God. <laughs> yeah. And then it says, cast all your cares on him. He cares for you. Yeah. So I just take the whole of all these situations I'm looking at, each one, put them in God's hands again. Say, okay, this, this, this. Because you care for me. Yeah. He cares for you. Mm -hmm. He really cares for you. He has compassion. Yeah. He's, he knows how you feel. He doesn't like it. That's why Jesus died on the cross, became a curse. He, so we can cast the whole mm -hmm. of our care yeah. on him. And then when we do that, it's like he says, okay, wait on the me, wait on the Lord, wait on me, and I will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings like eagles. You will run mm -hmm. and not be weary, walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. And he's, it's like an infusion of faith. Mm -hmm. It's the God kind of faith. It comes when we humble ourselves, casting our cares, letting him know what's in your heart, mm -hmm. putting it out there, make specific requests. And then he takes a hold and you take a hold of him, of his mm. word, and together, the next verse says, resist the devil. <laughs> mm. Resist doubt. Resist fear. Whatever that is, put a name on it. Say, I resist you in Jesus' name. Amen. And begin to speak the word. And the Holy Ghost will give us words like rapid fire, you know, <laughs> like a gun that has a repeat. What was it called? Automatic. 
automatic. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of semi-automatic. <laughs> It'll That's, come out. The word will come out. So how you receive yes. that word. And Jesus talked about, you know, the oppositions and the situations that would hinder the word and uh, how to receive the word. And so uh, you can get offended at people. Oh, yeah. Well, you get all, and he said the offense comes. And then he said uh, uh, you're distracted by this world and worldliness, just the cares of this life. You get so, so disappointed. so a lot of times people just get mm -hmm. caught up and, oh, you know, i got to do this and i got to do that. And so they don't spend time in the Word. Mm -hmm. And so then they don't get the results of the Word in their life or in their family or in their body. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love them. He just said Satan comes immediately to steal to that steal. Word. So how to guard that Word in your heart, in your meditations, in acting upon that word, because that is your only salvation. That's where your deliverance is, the is in the way. word. Mm -hmm. Or the power of God is in the word of God. His divine power has given unto us. So yes. in the mind of God, he's already given unto us everything that has to do with life or godliness. That means spiritual things and natural things. Mm -hmm. in, it's in his word. These exceeding great and precious promises. So how you receive the word uh, will determine its res results in mm -hmm. your life and mm -hmm. the effect upon your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's Jesus' parable. He said, you can't understand anything about the kingdom of God if you can't understand that parable of the sower, mm -hmm. which is in uh, Mark chapter 4 and mm -hmm. I think Matthew chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And so he sent his word, that's Psalms 107 verse 20, and it healed. healed and them delivered. And delivered them. So when you'd say the word is working mightily. Uh, one translation says it's re releasing its supernatural Super. power. <laughs> <laughs> so Dad Hagen said many people look for the spectacular and, and they miss the, the supernatural. supernatural. So a lot of times people are looking oh, for signs and wonders yeah. and spectacular things and all those things are available, but you don't want to miss the door to the supernatural which is believing and speaking and living by faith. Mm -hmm. And you can't live by faith unless you receive the word appropriately. Receive it. It's Take the word it. of faith, yeah. Mix it with some peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in your mouth. Swallow it. Put some honey on it. Uh, yeah, how to take the medicine. Yes. All right, so now if you'll go to Galatians 3.13 Galatians and 14. Galatians 3.13. Christ <laughs> hath redeemed us. Mm -hmm. Now what, what, what did I just say to you, Galatians 3.13? That's the word of God. That's God talking to you. Christ hath redeemed us. So you can say, oh, well, that's, that's a beautiful scripture. No, you want to receive it like God is talking to you or talking to me. So this is a, a specific, like a vitamin or a medicine, yeah, yeah. a specific one that has ingredients in it yeah. that will be active in you yeah. to help you. <laughs> But you got to get it out mm -hmm. and put it in your mouth. All right, so we're going to go from this, Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us. Number one, Christ hath. So he's not going to. It's you don't even have to ask him to or try to get him to. Christ has already redeemed or purchased our freedom. And we know how he purchased it in... Um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. And so he redeemed us with his blood. He entered in once into the holy place and he obtained eternal redemption for us. It's he no, purchased wow. our redemption, our freedom with mm -hmm. his, blood. his blood. So number one, Christ hath redeemed us. Mm. So your confession is Christ has redeemed me or by his stripes, I, I was, was healed. healed. By his stripes you were healed. Yes. Christ hath redeemed us. So in the mind of God, uh, God has already done everything he's going to do about your healing, your salvation, your blessing, your victory. In the mind of God, Jesus has already paid it all and he sat down. So now how you receive the gospel how you receive the word is going to determine its effect upon you. So number one, Christ hath redeemed, redeemed us. us. 
Praise the Lord. Praise What's your the first Lord. response? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm I redeemed mean, from that. that. It says in James, the first chapter, you receive with meekness yeah. the engrafted word. So meekness is praise the Lord. I, re I receive that. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm yeah, not going to argue Well, if that. that's true, why this and why that? I no, no, praise that. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so you, number Lord. one, Christ hath redeemed us or purchased our that's freedom. That's good news. Yeah, so he forgives all of our iniquities. He heals all all of our diseases. So you are, you are forgiven, washed in the blood of Jesus, and he also heals all of our diseases. So what's your response? Praise the Lord, I'm healed. Christ has redeemed me. Well, same thing with poverty, same thing with depression, mm -hmm. same thing with uh, old habits, Christ has redeemed me. Mm -hmm. And he says, Christ hath redeemed us, and then he tells you what from? Mm -hmm. From... The curse. What is in the curse? What's in the curse of the law? Well, you find that over in Deuteronomy 28, which includes sickness and disease. It includes poverty. Mm -hmm. It includes depression. Mm -hmm. uh, it includes we're redeemed from spiritual death from the hand of Satan. So you can see we are redeemed from the curse. And so if it's included in that list, and that list is, uh, is uh, actually just uh, a partial list, but it's a pretty long list. So... Uh, the curse in Deuteronomy 28 is uh, directed towards people who do not walk in the covenant. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's their works. Yeah. But Christ redeemed us. Praise he, the Lord. He took. We don't that have to curse. work for this. So he Jesus. says, Christ hath redeemed us redeemed from the curse us of the law. From that curse. So he tells you what he's redeemed you from. Well, not only has he redeemed you from the devil or demons, redeemed you from hell, but there's a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. that you are all redeemed from. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to be mm -hmm. redeemed from that. And really it boils down to three major things is poverty. And it's sickness. a curse. Sickness and spiritual death. Three major things, mm -hmm. but it lists a lot of other like mental torment, family, destruction family problems. in your family. Mm -hmm. and so you put the blood over the doorpost of your mind and over your family and you say, Christ has redeemed us. That's why when you have communion, so let's look at this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Number one, we're redeemed. He tells you what you're redeemed from, and he tells you how you're redeemed. He was made a curse for us. That's verse 14. Uh-huh. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us, number one, redeemed. Number two, from curse of the law. Then he tells you how you're redeemed, that he was made, made a, a curse, curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So you were redeemed from the curse by what happened on the cross, which Colossians specifically says the blood of his cross. So he says you've been redeemed from the curse by the blood of Jesus and by the blood of his cross. And then he says Christ redeemed you from the curse that the blessing. So now he says the blessing of the Lord and the blessing of Abraham, and you see all that still yeah. in Deuteronomy 28, and you see what God told Abraham. He told Abraham, fear not, I'm your exceeding great reward. <laughs> so Abraham's expecting some exceeding great blessing, not, not some uh, uh, just little things happen. Mm -hmm. He said exceeding great blessing. And he says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, even the promise of the Holy Spirit. Through faith. Aha, uh -huh. through faith and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So now your faith and the working of the Holy Spirit drives the curse out and you receive the blessing. Or through faith and the promise of the Holy Spirit, you receive the blessing and it drives the curse out. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So Christ has been. So when you take communion, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It's I know we're kind of... Uh, jumping around a little bit here, but really the same, it's all connected. same identical subject yes. on how you receive <laughs> the word. And here Paul talked about how you receive communion. Yes. Right? So what is happening, we call it the Lord's Supper, you call it communion, and really it's one of the two ordinances in the church that are a physical demonstration of a spiritual reality. 
Yeah. All right. So one of them is water baptism, mm -hmm. which is a physical demonstration of a spiritual reality. The second one is when you take communion, he said the Lord Jesus took the, the bread and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. And they, he, they took the bread and then he said, and he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. And they drank the cup. And then he said, and you do show the Lord's death until he comes again. So you're showing. What does that word show mean? On the outside of what's happening on the inside. So it's a demonstration yeah. of something that happens spiritually. Ah, actually the word show is there the word you promulgate. You do show, promulgate, that means to put a spiritual law into motion by an official declaration. Wow. I put a law into motion by official declaration to promulgate or to show the Lord's death until he comes again. In other words, when you take communion, you receive the bread, mix faith with that, receive the cup, which is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it shows your identification with Christ and it shows that you're redeemed. And, and that's said, an act of faith. It's an act of faith for your whole family. Yeah. And he says, as often as you do this, which means you could do that every day. Yeah. We did that when dealing with uh, Dylan's situation more than once. Oh, yes. And we did it with our family for Christmas. We took communion together. So you do show. So what happens is when you receive that, it is a, a physical Vision. demonstration of a spiritual reality. Right. It's like putting the blood on the doorpost of your house and you're saying, Satan, you'll not enter in. Amen. So you're submitting yourself to the Word of God and resisting the devil when you take communion. Yeah, now, anybody can eat the bread and the crackers and, 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 and drink the juice. Anybody can yeah. do that. But we when you faith. know yes. is when you show. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, when you know what happened on the cross, Christ redeemed us with his own blood. He redeemed us. His body was broken for us. And so you see your identification with Christ, and you say, that's not just for everybody, that's for me. And you take the bread. And you take the cup and you start praising God. Christ redeemed me from the curse. And you show something. And you, you know? show. That reminds me of Colossians 2.15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That God spoiled principalities and powers, made an open show. show of them. Christ triumphed. Triumphed he over triumphed. principalities and powers. So your, your, your act of faith is uh, registering your spiritual reality, you're acting it out in the scene. That's really the definition of faith. Is you take a spiritual reality and you begin to act like it's true. Mark and Trina Hankins invite you to a Holy Ghost meeting, April 23rd through the 25th in Alexandria, Louisiana. There are certain gifts and callings that aren't activated until you are saturated with the Holy Spirit. You won't want to miss this event with powerful praise and worship, teaching in the morning services on the person and work of the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit demonstration in the evening services. Join us April 23rd through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to study the Word on a deeper level? Do you want to grow in your revelation knowledge of the Word of God? We have just what you're looking for. Dive into studying the Word of God with the Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide by Mark Hankins. Compiled from more than 40 years of ministry experience, there are over 120 different translations included. Explore scripture after scripture on topics such as the Holy Spirit, righteousness, faith, and healing. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, understand who you are and what you have in Christ. Use this comprehensive guide in your daily Bible study. As Mark Hankin says, the whole Bible has the capacity to produce the faith for whatever you need to receive from God. Find out what the Word has to say about healing, joy, peace, and more. Sow it into your heart, let it take root, and watch it bear fruit in your life. Your gift of $50 or more will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. 
Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. For your gift of $50 or more, you will receive this special Spirit-filled Scripture Study Guide. Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. So we brought you this program again because on how to meditate on the Word of God, to challenge every thought and every imagination, the way you see yourself, the way you see your future in your life will change as you meditate on the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will literally paint the picture of that Word on your soul and on your mind. It literally even change your emotions while you're meditating on the Word because it is a living thing. It's alive. The Word has the life of God on the inside of it. And so as you meditate on the Word of God, you'll move from just information or just theology and you'll move into reality. You move just from information to revelation knowledge of the Word of God. There's a big difference from just having Bible knowledge and having revelation knowledge because that's where faith comes from. As you he hear the Word, feed on the Word, then faith springs. And you can tell when your faith rises up on the inside of you, everything else looks little and God looks big. So I encourage you to feed your faith, meditate on the Word, and the offer that we have for you, this will change your life. This book, I've had it out for for, I don't know, 30 years maybe. And it's called Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide. And it's a big notebook, a manual, got spiral bound. And you can just open it up uh, to any chapter. And it is actually the King James Version and 120 different translations of that scripture and studying on redemption. So you may go King James, then go to Amplified Bible, then go to William Barclay's translation, 120 different translations on redemption, what happened from the cross to the throne, the power of the blood of Jesus, to faith and how faith works, and all those different translations to the authority of the believer. One of my favorite chapters is the one on prayer, what Jesus taught about prayer, what the Apostle Paul taught about prayer. And then when you get to the chapter on righteousness, the free gift of righteousness that is yours and the power of that righteousness that belongs to every believer through the blood of Jesus. When you meditate on that word and you feed on it, it brings your soul and your mind into agreement with a spiritual reality. We call that faith. And then your words begin to line up with the word of God. And I'll tell you, mountains are moving. Not all the mountains are external. There'll be a few mountains leave from your brain, from your mind. <laughs> Those kind of obstacles will be removed and you'll walk in the light and live in the light of the word, the light of redemption, the light of the love of God, the whole chapter on the God kind of love. So you got to get this book in order, uh, download the messages on meditation and this book, Understanding Who You Are in Christ, Spirit-Filled Scripture Study Guide, 120 different translations. Woo! I encourage you to get it. Order the book or you can call and order it right now and feed your faith and you'll rise up and mountains shall be removed. So until next time, I'm Mark Hankins. May God richly bless you. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.